Elon Musk steps down as CEO of Twitter, YouTube gets aggressive with ad blockers, and employees would actually accept productivity monitoring if it would save them from struggling to find the information they need just to do their jobs. These top tech news stories and more for Friday, May the 12th, 2023. I'm your host, Jim Love, CIO of IT World Canada and Tech News Day in the U.S. Elon Musk has picked a new CEO for Twitter. He hasn't named who that is, but in a tweet this afternoon, he announced that she will be starting in six weeks. Musk had promised to replace himself as CEO as soon as he could find someone to do the job. Now, what prompted this? Was it the poll that he took on Twitter in December where the majority of Twitter users said he should step down? Was it the Tesla shareholders who were growing very impatient with Musk's fascination with Twitter at the expense of Tesla? Or was it that he just doesn't want the CIO job because, as he said before, the title is made up and it doesn't mean anything? I'll bet he used that line in recruiting his successor, that smooth-talking devil. I'd like you to be CEO. D don't worry, it doesn't mean anything. It's a made-up title. And given that Musk is going to stay around as both executive chair and CTO, overseeing product, software, and sysops, he might be right. As part of the launch at Google's I.O. conference, there was a video conferencing product called Starline. Starline is a 3D video conferencing facility that makes it seem like you're talking directly to the person in the same room. A life-size detailed to the point that it feels like you're having a natural conversation. At least, that's what their demo shows. This has been a great idea, and if they could pull it off, they would absolutely revolutionize remote meetings, at least one-on-one -on -one meetings. But the technology required to make it work took up the space of an entire room, and God knows what the cost of it would be. And then came AI. And now, in place of a mountain of hardware, Google has managed to deliver this with standard cameras and artificial intelligence. It's still not ready for launch, and even with this new AI-driven version, Google is not saying what the cost will be, but given that it's really great for one-on-one -on -one meetings, but not group meetings, there is going to be a cost ceiling. We'll post a link to their demo so you can see it for yourself, and if they deliver anything like this video, it will be incredible. And we'll let you know how to get that link at the end of the podcast. BlackBerry announced today that it has sold substantially all of its non-core patents and patent applications to a firm named Malachi Innovations. BlackBerry is reported to have received $170 million in cash for the deal. BlackBerry notes that these do not include any patents necessary to support their current core businesses and operations. The company will retain in excess of 2,000 patents, including patents related to mobile devices. Now, BlackBerry is largely regarded as the developer of the first smartphone, and it abandoned that business after being devastated by competition from Apple and Android. John Chen, the company's current CEO, executed what many saw as an incredible turnaround, cutting costs and refocusing the company on cybersecurity offerings and software used in the new smart automobiles. According to a report in the Globe and Mail, the company's software is used in 215 million cars and by all of the 10 largest automakers. But in the past months, the company has reported a slowdown in sales and saw a steep decline in its cybersecurity revenue, which the company blames on slow government contracts. The extra cash infusion and CEO John Chen's leadership give the company two strong assets to rebound in the next few quarters. YouTube surprised some of its viewers with a pop-up that warned them that ad blockers are not allowed, according to a report in the register. According to YouTube, this is an experiment and only a small number of viewers will see this when browsing YouTube. The box, which is shown in the register article, tells the user that it looks like you may be using an ad blocker and reminds them that ads are what allow YouTube to be offered free to billions of users and ensure that content providers receive compensation. If users want to have no ads shown, they can subscribe to YouTube Premium for about $12 US. The service made $29.2 billion from ads in 2022. Now that's up from $28.8 billion the year before. That's over 11% of Google's total ad revenue. But in the last quarter, ad revenue slipped down almost $700 million, or 8% from the same quarter in the previous year. 
that could be a result of the increased number and length of pre-roll ads, which has upset some viewers. So are ad blockers the cause of that decline? Google is obviously worried enough to be testing out ways to fight back. Google suggests that users who are unhappy with the stop ad blocking message can simply subscribe to premium, which an additional 30 million subscribers opted for in 2022, taking the total premium subscriptions to 80 million. And at $12 a month, that's a lot of revenue. But you don't have to jump right away. Users report that even with the message, you can close it and still use an ad blocker for now. And a Gartner survey reveals that 47% of digital workers struggle to find the information they need to effectively perform their jobs. The study covered 4,861 full-time employees in the US, UK, India, and China. One of the things that employees blamed was application sprawl. The study showed that the average number of applications that a knowledge worker uses is now up to 11, up from six applications in 2019 but 40% of workers exceed that average and 5% said they use 26 or more applications to do their job. Eeks. So the idea that there's an app for that may be more of a problem than a solution. In fact, the study warns that when IT attempts to solve every challenge with a new application, the workers struggle to find information, make wrong decisions due to a lack of awareness, and generally get confused and lost in the noise. How serious is the problem? Gartner reports that employees who almost universally dislike or distrust employee productivity monitoring would actually accept that monitoring if it would solve the problem they were facing from application sprawl and struggling to find the information they need. Now that's a clear indication there's a real problem. And that's the top tech news for today. We go to air with a daily newscast five days a week, as well as a special weekend interview with an expert on topics relevant to today's tech news. Follow hashtag trending on Google, Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And you can even get us on your Alexa or Google smart speaker. And you can even find us on YouTube. Only we're called Tech News Day. We love your comments. You can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or on Mastodon as at the real Jim Love on our Mastodon site, technews.social. Or if that's too much, just leave a comment under the text version at itworldcanada.com slash podcasts, and you can find all of these links in the text versions there. I'm your host, Jim Love. Have a fantastic Friday.